Hey guys, another video on P5JS, learning to code and creating shapes and still working on conditionals for this particular lesson. Um, we have two traffic lights. One is a mouse over, so you just have to move the mouse and it will actually change wherever you actually mouse. I wonder if I get, yeah, even if I don't quite touch, we'll talk about that on the tail end of the video, that there's certain points, even though you're outside of the circle, and we'll explain why that is. Equally, we have the same program, and this is the click. So this isn't a mouse over. It doesn't change for that. I actually have to come somewhere within this threshold value to get red, yellow, or green. So let's start with the first one. The first one is just dragging your mouse. Red, yellow, green, in terms of where it goes. And we just want to talk about that in terms of what's going on. So we're going to look at this code. So I'm looking at lines one, two, three, four. And if you notice, and I really want to stress to you on this particular video, I really want to make sure that you understand how vitally, imperatively crucial it is to include, like I have on line five, this double slash is a comment. So whenever you see that double slash as a comment, and it is crucial that both as a coder, you need to put comments for yourself. As a student, you need to put comments for your teacher. As a coder, you might put comments for your employer. Um, as a collaborator, as a coder, you will put notes for your partners, the people that you're working with, developing programs, developing code. So right now, I have lines one, two, three, four. And if you notice, I have X and Y are the starting points. So X from, if this is zero, zero on the top left-hand corner, that would be the origin in P5JS. So if I go all the way out here along the x-axis, that's the 150 that I'm setting rect x on line 1. And rect y is 50, so 50 down along the y-axis is the starting point of the actual rectangle that we're making for the traffic light. Thereafter, we have 100 for the width, so from... 150 and this takes me all the way out to 250 and from 50 300 down the rect height rect h takes me all the way down to 350 just if we were looking at an actual coordinate plane you don't see it there's ways to show that where we could show the x and y coordinate but for this particular program i just want you to understand that 150 is the x and 50 down is the y where we start and then we start the actual width, the x distance, and the y height. And so we have this light x is 200 is going across, right? And ju just to go over that. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I digress for a minute. Um, the, the light x and the light w are actually setting up how these circles are going. So it's actually setting up so that light x, x is 200, it's setting up a value where the center is going to be. And that light x, by the way, is the rectangle plus the width divided by 2. So we did that and we do the math. So what we have is 150 plus, rect w is 100, divided by 2 is 50, 150 plus 50 is 200. And if you notice, I have that light X is 200 and light W is 80, right? Just we're putting the actual points. So I have a point over here of 280 down. And that's the point where it is just to understand where we're putting the actual light W and light, uh, light X and light W for the point. And we'll talk about that more when we go further down because we have to actually change the height of where it's going. So anyway, we'll go down. Now, on the next, on the next set of code, we have color one, color two, color three for the three separate ellipses. And what we're initializing those 
colors to be is black to start until I mouse over it. Okay, so when I mouse over it, it will change. Now, the next thing we're doing is we're creating the canvas. So we're just laying out up top some variables and now we're setting up this canvas and that's 400 by 400. So from zero to 400 on the X, from zero to 400 on the Y. And we'll go on a little further. The background we set to be black. Clearly, we can see that over there. <coughs> now, we're going to make this rectangle. That's the actual traffic light over here. So if you notice, one, we're filling it with orange. We're stroking it with white. And if you could see, there's that little white outline in there. Okay. And now we have a rectangle. And the rectangle is... Rect X, Rect Y, Rect W, Rect H. So if we look up above, and I can just comment as I'm talking to you. So truly what it's doing is giving these variables, giving them values that we're calling back. So it's 150, comma 50. That's where the rectangle starts. And then it's 100 wide by 300 tall. And that's still, even though it's in parentheses, it's a comment. That's a whole comment over there. And what we're doing, as I am on line 26, I'm drawing the base rectangle for the light frame. Okay, and the rec function I just put over here, you have an x1, y1, right? So I have the 150, 50 is where we start. That's the top left-hand corner, right over there where I'm mousing now. And then you set the width and height, and it takes you down and makes an actual rectangle. And as you see, we filled it with orange. The next thing that we're doing, we'll go down to the next. By the way, the light X remains constant for all because it's just a center line. So if I'm coming anywhere along this particular line as I'm going down the center of my traffic light, that value isn't going to change because the center remains the center. It's the Y value that actually is doing all the changing, right? So now I'm on line 30. I'm starting to look at a top light. So I'm filling something with color one. If you remember up above, color one is black. I'm making an ellipse. The ellipse is going to have light X. That's that center point. So here's my X value. And then we actually have to divide the entire height. Remember, the height is 300, right? I'm divided by 3, so I'm going 100 divided by 3, and I'm actually at 100, and the light width we already established up above. What was light W? I think that was 80, right? So I have, I have this value, right? Light X, let's see what that is. Light X is 200. 200 is coming across this way. I have 80 is rect W, okay, and that's my point, 180, that's my down, and then the actual light width, I'm sorry, the light width is 80, so that's how far across, okay, so you get that, and now this rect H divided by 3, I just want you to remember, that's the initial Y position for the top light right over here at the center so that h divided by three rect h divided by three i believe we get to 100 okay same thing as we go down on the next two lights the fill color two and we're making the middle light and we're making the bottom light the lower light so we have these three lights and then what's actually happening and we have three conditions and what we're checking is we're checking mouse X and, and you notice and, this is a new function that we're using now with conditional, we have and. So I have to have a couple of conditions being met. So in what I'm doing here is I'm pulling these values back. I'm calling them back and saying, okay, if light X minus light W is, mouse X is greater than this value and less than that value, and mouse Y is greater than these two differences and less than that sum. Then what I do, so if I move over here, 
it turns red and otherwise it's black, right? If the mouth is over the threshold value. So what we're doing is we're setting up, and this is the part where I said, how come I'm not touching the circle, but if you go over here, you see how even though we're kind of outside of where the circle is, it sort of stays regardless. So this spot, no, but when I'm like in this little area here, next to the light but if you picture the square overlaid over that circle that's really what will make it um same thing is happening so we're just calling some different values for all of these so now i'm looking at condition b and condition c the numbers are the same but we're just changing the threshold values so now we have flashing yellow on um condition b so i'm, I'm just referring to this comment on 56 here that it turns yellow if I've met those threshold values and fall within the range. And it's a whole lot of and this, and that, and this, and that. And when we do this in person together, we'll actually draw this out on graph paper so we can really see what it is that we're doing. Because looking at it on the screen here, you don't see that grid. But once you start laying it out on an actual piece of graph paper, you would see where we have this threshold. So right over here, it's yellow, and I come right out, and it's not. Right over here, it's yellow, and I come right out, and it's not. Okay, same thing over here, but there's that little spot. So I'm in the square that we can't see, but when we graph it together, you will see it. Okay, so that's kind of cool. That's the mouse over one. The other program is identical with one exception, and we added something over here. We added an additional function called mouse press. So on mouse press, instead of actually mousing over, I have to click. So when I click and meet the threshold values, it will turn red. If I click and I don't meet those threshold values within that square, it turns black. And same for the other. Okay, if I go out, black, in, yellow, out, black. And this point over here inside that imaginary square that we can't really see. And it's still turning yellow even though I'm outside of the circle. Still turning green even though I'm outside of the circle. But once I'm outside of that space, they all turn black. Click, 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 click. But now, green, green, back to black. Okay, so I think that gives you enough. I went over a little longer than I'd like to, but as we get together, we'll see how we could set these up. And I really just wanted to stress to you, one, the whole idea of threshold values and using these AND functions as part of the conditional so that we could set up multiple requirements to meet in order for the condition to be true or false. And that's all for today. So we'll be making that traffic light soon. Enjoy the day.